Hello, in this lecture, we're gonna talk about partnerships and we're gonna talk about the selling of a partnership interest. We will be able to describe the process of selling a partnership interest, create the journal entry to record the sale of a partnership interest, define the effect of journal entry to sell a partnership interest on the trial balance accounts, and explain the effect on the capital accounts of selling a partnership interest. So we're gonna do this by looking at a problem. We're gonna look through the problem, post the transaction, see what happens to the capital counts in terms of both a trial balance as well as a format of just a worksheet type of format. This is gonna be our simplified accounts that we will be looking at. Only cash that we're gonna have, I mean, <laughs> only asset that we will have will be cash. Only liability, accounts payable. And then we will have our capital accounts. This is where we will be focusing on. And then we have the income statement down here Note that nothing is in the income statement. The income statement has been closed out. You can think of this as a post-closing trial balance or just basically the balance sheet accounts being represented here. We also have the accounting equation, assets equal liabilities and owner's equity. Also note that we have the debits represented with non-bracketed or positive numbers and credits represented with bracketed or negative numbers. This gives us an easy balancing process in that we see this zero down here represents the fact that the assets minus the liabilities equals zero. Therefore, the assets equal the liabilities and we can shorten our debits and credit columns and have a quick worksheet to see what the transactions will do to our trial balance accounts in this way. Clearly net income is zero at this point because the revenue and expense accounts have been closed out to the capital account balances. So what we have are the three partners, M, B, and L, represented it here, and these capital accounts are going to share their profit and loss at a 3 to 5 ratio. We're going to say that B will be selling their capital account interest to N. So here's B, here's capital account interest, here's N, that's um, who we're going to sell, B is going to sell their capital account interest to after the transaction was approved by the other two partners for cash of 120000 now, one of the tricky things when we think about selling a partnership interest is that the, the who are the two parties in the agreement is the first question we need to ask. In this case, the partnership is actually not in the transaction. The transaction is between B uh, and the new partner, N, meaning that there is $120,000 exchanging hands here going from one account to another, but it's not going to the partnership account. Therefore, the partnership is getting nothing. So when we ask our question in terms of is cash affected in terms of the partnership, in this case, no, it's not affected. The agreement, the, the deal is between B and N. B says, hey, you know what? I have a partnership interest. It has a book value of 124.2. What does that mean? Well, the assets amount to 550 minus the liabilities of 10 mean that we have 540 broken out book value of the company and B owns or is owed 124.2. That's the value of the company that is owned or the partnership that is owned by B at this time. B says to N, hey, I'll sell you this partnership interest worth a book value of 124.2 for you giving me cash of 120,000. Partnership not gonna receive anything. However, the other two partners do have to agree to this, that the other two partners are not forced to take on N as a new partner just because B wants to sell the partnership interest. The other two partners do have to agree to the terms and if they do agree, then B and N can have this transaction and make this transaction happen. So first let's talk about what this ratio means, the three to five. So when we think about a partnership interest, if there's two partners, the most common partnership interest would be what, a 50-50 or 60-40, uh, something like that. We will often represent the partnership interest in a ratio format like a 3 to 5 for various reasons one it's a little bit shorter and two if the if the ratio is not even then it's more specific to have a ratio rather than representing it as percentages so if we were to look at this then uh, m's capital count is going to be 30 percent calculated as 3 divided by 3 plus 2 plus 5 is 10 so 3 over 10 so that's how you calculate that 0.3, move the decimal place two places over 30%. Then we have, of course, B. So if we take a look at B, we do the same thing. B is the two. So we're gonna take the two divided by three plus two plus five or 10. And that gives us the 0.2, move the decimal two places over 20%, 20%. 20%. 
And yes, we'll do this one more time for L. L has a partnership interest of five. So we're gonna take the five out of the three plus two plus five, 10. And that gives us the 0.5 or 50%. If we add up the 30, the 20, the 50, we add up to, of course, the 100%. So whenever you see the ratios breaking out, if you see any ratio broken out like this, three colon two colon five, you add them up, three plus two plus five is 10. Three over 10, two over 10, five over 10, and that will give you your ratio breakout. Now, if we look at the capital accounts, then we have 151.2, 124.2, uh, two, 264.6 adds up to 510. Note that those are just the same capital account balances that would be represented on the trial balance. So here they are on the trial balance from M, B, and L. Uh, you could have problems that would represent this in terms of a table, could have problems represented in terms of a trial balance. I really like seeing it in terms of trial balance because as accountants and bookkeepers, we're often going to be using trial balances <laughs> and it could help to see it in that format, but it's also very helpful to see it in terms of a table. Uh, note that the assets minus the liabilities equals these capital account balances. Also note that these capital account balances are not necessarily in proportion of 30, 20, 50 of the 540. A lot of people will think that that should be the case. Not the case. Normally, the 30, 20, 50 represents how we allocate net income. Doesn't have anything to do with the actual ratio of account balances in the capital accounts between the uh, partnerships. Reason being is because these accounts only represent to income and loss allocations general and depending on the terms of the partnership agreement and that means that we could have invested different amounts and partners could have drawn out different amounts so these these capital accounts basically represent the amount that a partner could theoretically draw out of the company all right so then if we if we go on here we're going to look at our journal entry to record this transaction so what is happening is that b is going to leave the, the partnership so if we think through this, we're going to think through, well, is cash affected? In this case, we're saying no, cash isn't affected. It's not affected, even though cash did exchange hands. However, the cash didn't go uh, to or from the partnership. The cash went uh, from N, the new partner, to B personally. Not B as part of the partnership, but B's pocket. Therefore, no cash went to the partnership. What did happen is B's giving up their capital account. So B's on the books, B's gone, B's leaving, B's leaving town, he's not gonna be here anymore. We need to say, hey, B's on the books at 124.2, B's gone now, their partnership interest needs to be zero. Therefore, uh, the capital account balance has a credit balance. We need to make it go down, we're gonna do the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a debit. So we know we're gonna debit this capital account, which will bring it down to zero. Then we have to credit something. What are we gonna credit? We're crediting the new person coming on the books, the new person N. So N will be credited for the 124.2. N is going to be on the books zero up to by 124.2 to 124.2. So it's a pretty straightforward journal entry. The question though that people are going to have is, is they're going to say, well, wait a second. What about the 120 up here? If N paid 120, Shouldn't their capital account go up by 120? Why is it going up by 124.2? And the reason is because, remember the agreement was between uh, N and B. So N said, hey, I'm gonna give you my share of the partnership interest. The partnership, my share of the 550 minus the 10 is 124.2. And I will sell that to you, N, for $120,000. So you might be asking, well, why would B sell their partnership interest, which has a book value of the 510 assets minus the 10 of 124.2 and only receive 120,000? And there could be multiple reasons for that. Maybe the maybe the va the value of the assets are not fair market value as is negotiated between the two partners. Maybe uh, B needs to leave uh, quickly and needs to make the transaction happen very rarely will those two things match so just be aware that if the, the sale is between uh, an existing partner and a new partner then we need to take the current partner off the books at whatever they're on the books for and then put the new partner on the books for whatever the old partner was on the books for no cash is affected in the partnership 
because the cash went into the pocket of the partner, not the bank account of the partnership. So if we were to look at this in terms of a, of a slightly different way we can look at it, what if B sells uh, the capital interest to the partnership for cash? So now B saying, hey, I'm gonna take off, I need to leave, and I wanna sell my partnership interest to the partnership. So now the other two partners, M and B, are going to basically buy out, I mean, M and L are basically gonna buy out B in this case. So that's gonna be the arrangement of the agreement. B is gonna to, to sell the capital account to the partners for cash of 200,000. So is cash gonna be affected? Yeah. So we're gonna think about this. First, I wanna think about the types, the part of the journal tree that we can do. Then we'll run into a problem and then we'll do some calculations to adjust for that problem. So first we're gonna say, is cash affected? And we're gonna say, yeah, cash is gonna go down because the partnership is paying B for B's interest. So the partnership is saying, hey, uh, B, we're gonna give you 200,000 for your, cap your capital account interest. Therefore, we're gonna take uh, cash down, cash is debit balance, we're gonna do the opposite thing to it, which is a credit by the amount paid. And then we know that B needs to be off the books. B's on the books for 124.2, B is no longer with us, therefore B should not have any amount in their capital accounts, therefore uh, that's a credit we need to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it which would be a debit of the 124.2 so now uh, uh the partnership paid 200 b is going to be off the books at uh 124.2 we have a difference here so we have a difference and that's going to be a debit that debit's going to have to be divided in some way between m and l now you might be saying well once again well if b uh has a 124.2 interest in the partnership, why is it that the partners would pay 200,000 to pay off the capital account balance? And, and again, there could be multiple reasons. It could be that there's uh, some kind of goodwill in the partnership that's not being reported in the book, some type of intangible assets. It could be that they, they really want to uh, let, let uh, B go and they're willing to pay more uh, in order to do that. So there could be multiple reasons for that. But once again, that's an agreement between the partnership in this case and b so uh they those things will very rarely match now we need to figure out how to allocate that difference how to allocate that plug so we have our mb and l which is a 30 20 50 ratio that we discussed before between the three two five 30 percent 20 percent 50 percent here's the same capital count so here's the capital counts here here's the capital counts represented in terms of a table book value of the company 540 that's equivalent to the assets, cash, less the uh, liabilities, representing uh, accounts payable in this case. And then the new income and loss ratio. So now we have to say, well, B's gone. Therefore, we can't allocate between M and L between a 30-50 because it needs to add up to 100 or 1. So we need to come up with a new ratio. So if we look at this, we have, if we had a 3-2-5 ratio and now the 2 is gone, we can think of it as a 3-5 ratio. So if we think about our new ratio then, we could think that we have a 3 out of, um, a 3 plus 5 is 8 divided by 8. So our new ratio would be 0.375 or 37.5% for M. And then if we think about uh, L, L had five over the three plus five or eight. So we can say that we have a 0.625 or a 62.5. So our new ratio that we're gonna allocate uh, this amount by, this difference by, will be the 37.5 uh, 37 and the 20 and the 62.5. So now we're gonna allocate this difference. So that difference being the 200,000 cash received minus the capital account to take them off the books, 124.2, and that's the 75.8, and we're gonna allocate it times the 0.375 M, and that's gonna give us the 28,425, and then we'll do the same thing over here. Of course, the difference will be the other, but we'll do the calculation just for the fun of it. 758 times the 0.625, that gives us the 47,375. And of course, the 28,425 plus the 47,375 equals the 75,800. So we're going to allocate the plug, the 75,800, in uh, the in 28,425 and 
47, 375, M and L respectively. If we look at the journal entry, then it would look like this. We're going to debit N's capital account, 28,425, and debit L's capital account, 47,375, and we'll see what the effect on the trial balance will be this time. All right, so here's the same journal entry we have, and this is our chart of accounts. And of course, here's that table that we are looking at. Let's see what would happen if we posted this transaction. What would happen to the capital accounts? Does it do what we expect it to do? What do we expect it to do? We expect the ending capital accounts to be M122775. B is going to be gone. L is going to be at 217225 to give us a total capital account or book value of 340. All right, so B's capital account, we're going to debit for the 124.2. So here's B has a credit. We're doing the opposite thing to it, debiting it, making it go down to zero. Cash, uh, cash is going to go down. So cash has a debit balance. We're doing the opposite thing to it, crediting it. Cash in the partnership will go down to 350. And M has a credit balance in the capital account. We're doing the opposite thing to it, debiting the capital account making it go down to 122,775. And L has a credit in the capital account, like all capital accounts, and it goes down with, because we're doing the opposite thing to it, which is a debit to 217,275. So note that the new capital accounts still equal the book value of the company. So the assets of 350,000 minus the liabilities of 10,000 still add up to the M and L's capital accounts at this time. All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing. However, this time uh, we're gonna have B sells the capital partnership interest to the partnership. However, they're only going to uh, pay 50,000 this time. So same idea, except the exchange will be the 50,000. So is cash affected? Yeah, it's gonna go down by the 50,000 in this case. So if we take a look at that, then let's go through the journal entry, see what we can do, where we run into a problem then do the calculation. So cash, is cash affected? Yeah, it's going down. We, the partnership's paying B for uh, the partnership interest. Cash has a debit balance. We're gonna do the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a credit. We're going to take B off the books. B has a credit balance in the capital account. We need to make it go down. Therefore, we're gonna do the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a debit. Now the debits do not equal the credits. We need more credits in this case and the credits are gonna to go to M and L, the other two partners, and we're gonna to have to figure out how to break it out between those two partners. Remember, we have our, our ratios here, so we have M, 30, 20, and 50% broken out between a three to five ratio, and we have our capital account balances represent at 151.2, 124.2, and 264.6, which are represented in the trial balance up here. If we're then gonna break out our um, our ratio then it's going to be looking like this same calculation we did last time if we're saying three and the two is gone now so we're dividing by three plus five so divided by eight so that's where we come up with the 37.5 and the five over divided by eight which is the three plus the five because the two is gone that's where we get the 62.5 and so now then we have our difference of 74.2. So where does the 74.2 come from? We, uh, B is going off the books at 124.2 and cash is going to be affected by 50. And that's the 74.2. If we multiply that times, the 0 0.375, 0 0.375. That's what's going to give us the 27.825, which is going to be allocated to M. And of course, L will receive the difference. Let's do that calculation, however which is the 74,200 times the 0.625. And that gives us the 46,375. So that's how we're gonna break out this 74,200. That's the plug that we need up here. So our new capital account balances then would be the 17925, which of course is the beginning balance plus the 27,825 and the 264,600 plus the 46,375, giving us the 310,975, which will give us a total capital account balance of 490. So if we see that in terms of journal entry, we're gonna credit or increase the capital account balance for M, 27,825, and we're gonna credit L, the 46,375. All right, so if we take a look at the effect of this transaction on the trial balance, then 
We'll see if it does what we expect it to do. What do we expect it to do? We expect M's capital account balance to end at 179.025 B to be off the books because we have now sold B's partnership and they're, they're not with us anymore. And then L's going to be at a capital account balance of 310.975, giving us a total capital account balance, which is equivalent to the book value of the company assets minus liabilities of 490,000. All right, so we're gonna debit B's capital account. So here's B again on the books at 427.2 has a credit balance, we're doing the opposite thing to it, bring B off the books by debiting it, bringing the balance down to zero. So B is off the books. Cash, cash is being paid by the partnership to the partner uh, of B in order to buy B's capital account interest. Therefore, cash is a debit balance. We're making it go down by doing the opposite thing to it, which is a credit, bringing it down from 550 to 500. Then M, uh, M has a credit here. So here is M, credit balance in the capital accounts like all capital accounts have and we are going to credit it making it go up because we're doing the same thing to it from 151 200 by 27 825 to 179025 and then l we're going to credit l so here's l's capital account balance has a credit balance in it we are going to credit it bringing it up to 310 975 we now have a b off the books we have uh, m and l on the books and we see that the cash minus or the assets minus the liabilities equals the new capital account balances between the only two partners left being M and L at this time. So we are now able to describe the process of selling a partnership interest, create the journal entries to record the sale of a partnership interest, define the effect of the journal entry to sell a partnership interest on the trial balance accounts and explain the effect on the capital accounts of selling a partnership interest.